I love retro game emulation. So when I saw this older Lenovo T420 laptop along with this charger at my local Goodwill for only $9.99, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So in today's video, I'm going to be seeing just how well a $10 laptop handles some emulation. Now, I know you're thinking, wow, 10 bucks for a laptop and a charger, that's a great deal. And while you're not wrong, this thing isn't exactly in mint condition. And on top of that, according to the Goodwill, it has a couple problems. Now, according to the Goodwill, it's got an Intel i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, no hard drive or operating system, and apparently it has a bad battery. But honestly, that's not that big of a deal because we have the charger. Now, looking at the laptop, it's not in bad condition at all. I mean, it's got a couple stickers from Goodwill and Energy Star. I actually think it's really funny that they have the little tab here for the Energy Star sticker, like they know. No one wants this. No one cares. <laughs> But man, I just love this type of laptop. But even more than that, I love the era it comes from. I mean, this was back when laptops had removable batteries. Your RAM and sometimes even processor was directly under this little door, which gave easy access and great consumer upgradability. But on top of that, this thing actually has good I.O. On one side, it's got USB, eSATA. It's got a CF card slot and an SD card slot, along with an optical disk drive. And on the other side, it's got a VGA, Ethernet, display port, and another USB, along with quick access to the hard drive. And then on the back, you have a charging port and another USB. Like, man, if they still made laptops like this, I would 100% take it advantage of all that I.O. Because some companies, <coughs> Apple, just doesn't believe in I.O. at all. But anyway, other than a couple scuffs and scratches here and there, this thing's mostly clean. All the keys are there. Largely, this is a great computer. It has a fingerprint reader. Like, man, even with an i5, as long as you have 8 gigs of RAM and a decent SSD, you could absolutely still run Windows 10 just fine. But that's not what we're going to be doing with it today. See, today we're going to be installing a custom operating system called Botocera, which is basically a distribution of Linux designed solely for emulation. And the cool thing about Botocera is you don't actually need an SSD or a hard drive to run it at all. In fact, you can boot it off of a thumb drive, which is what we're going to be doing today. Now, yes, I do have extra SSDs lying around. I could install it and actually copy Botocera over onto the SSD, but really, I don't feel like it needs it. But the first thing I'm going to be doing is giving this thing a good clean. See, when you're buying anything secondhand, especially tech, you need to absolutely thoroughly clean it. Because honestly, you don't know what the heck the previous owner was doing with it. Okay, so real quick, I'm not sure if the Goodwill just didn't test it all the way or what happened, but I'm very clearly not plugged in right now, and it's running. So they claim it has a bad battery, but it's running just fine here. So I'm going to see if maybe the battery is just old and not quite holding the charge like it should, but I haven't charged it once since I own the thing, and it works. So I guess that's one thing we don't have to fix. So let's go ahead and give it a good clean. Okay, so this thing cleaned up really well, and the more I cleaned it, the more I realized how good of a deal I got. Regardless of the fact that it doesn't have a hard drive, and apparently the battery is bad, this is a great PC. I mean, for 10 bucks, now, because this isn't really a how-to guide, and because there are a lot of really good channels that cover how to put Botocera on a flash drive, I'm not going to cover exactly how you put Botocera on a flash drive. Trust me, it's really easy, and I'll link a good video in the description. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my Botocera flash drive, and I'm going to boot from it. Yes! And just like that, she works. This thing's actually running Botocera off of the thumb drive. So we're gonna go ahead and install some games. Now for me, I'm gonna be using this five terabyte external WD Black hard drive. Now I have a lot of my favorite ROMs loaded onto this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer a couple of them over. Also, notice how I'm not using my power cable? Yeah, no, the battery's fine. And actually, if you push F2, you can see that the battery's at 51%. It's doing just fine. Now, it's not under any load, but until I tell you that we're using the power cord, just assume we're running off of battery. All right, so I got some ROMs loaded onto this flash drive, and we're going to go ahead and play some games. But first, I'm going to be using this wired Xbox 360 controller. Now, this is not an official Xbox 360 wired controller. This is just a cheap one off of Amazon. It works with almost everything. And honestly, it's perfect for what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. This thing has the longest cord I think I have ever seen. 
All right, she's plugged in. Okay, so now that we've got everything hooked up, we've got a couple ROMs loaded onto this flash drive. Let's go ahead and test some games. We're gonna start with some older systems. We're gonna start with the Game Boy Classic, and then we're gonna work our way up to trying PSP. So with that, let's see how this $10 laptop handles some games. Okay, so the first game I tested was Super Mario Land for the original Game Boy. Now, quick editor's note, because this is my first video, I really don't feel like dealing with potential copyright infringements with Nintendo. We all know how they can be. So I decided to mute their music and add my own. And of course, seeing as how this is the easiest system on this list to emulate, this laptop handled it perfectly. The next system to test was the Game Boy Advance, so I decided to load up one of the more popular titles released for this console, Mario Kart Super Circuit. This is the first time this laptop is working with color and... Uh, 3D? Question mark? But this system runs really well on this laptop, which I guess isn't that much of a flex because I'm pretty sure your grandma's pacemaker could run this game just about as well, but I mean, hey, it looks good. Next up is the Nintendo 64. Now, seeing as how we just tested Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance, I found it fitting to test Mario Kart 64 for the Nintendo 64 as kind of a comparison through console generations. As you can see, I've upscaled the modeling to 1080p and this game runs flawlessly. There's no noticeable input latency, and even with the textures on their default resolution, this game looks amazing. And the fact that this laptop can handle Nintendo 64 games upscaled to 1080p makes me think it's actually going to do really well with some higher end consoles. But before I move on, I had to test a childhood favorite of mine. This is Excitebike 64, and I remember playing this on my uncle's Nintendo 64 as a kid. Again, the modeling is set to 1080p, but the textures are set to their default resolution. Yet despite this, this also looks and runs very well. Anyway, enough of that, I just had to bring back some nostalgia. The next system I tested was the PSP. Now this is special to me because this was actually the first system I ever owned as a kid. I distinctly remember spending hours as a kid playing this exact game, NCAA 2010, as my favorite team, the Georgia Bulldogs. Now with the PSP, as with the Nintendo 64, I've upscaled the modeling to 1080p but left the textures on default. This laptop is actually kind of blowing me away because it's doing really, really well. There's again, no noticeable input latency, and I don't even see any frame stuttering that I didn't notice when I was playing on the actual PSP. But man, I need to do something about those textures. Now the final game I tested was Need for Speed Most Wanted for the PSP. Now if you guys are interested in seeing me test systems like the GameCube and the PS2, leave a comment down below. The reason I didn't test those systems today was because, well, one, I knew they would chug, and two, I would need a larger flash drive. But anyway, with the same graphics as NCAA, this game also runs very well. There's no noticeable input latency, and it's very fluid. This laptop has just blown me away. If it can emulate everything up to PSP upscale to 1080p, I can go ahead and guarantee you it'll play everything comfortably in between, with maybe exception to, like, the Dreamcast. At the end of the day, you gotta remember, this was $10. And for $10, this is honestly one of the coolest things I could've bought. And just like that, we have a working emulation station from a $10 laptop. This is proof that you can take something that's old and cheap and repurpose it into something that's a lot of fun. And honestly, for 10 bucks, I'm very satisfied. And if you're out there wondering where you can find deals like this, don't worry, you absolutely can. Places like garage sales, on eBay, you can find these machines for dirt cheap on eBay. If you keep your eyes open for long enough, you're bound to find them. But do you know what works even better than laptops like this? Old desktops. So if you're interested in seeing a video where I repurpose an old desktop into an emulation station, leave a comment down below. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching this. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but this is actually the first long form content I've uploaded to my channel. Hopefully I'll look back at this one day and be like, that's where I started. And I hope you can tell, but a lot of work went into making sure that this video is high quality and fun to watch. So if you've enjoyed it, a sub to the channel, a like, and a comment down below would mean the world to me. But anyway, until the next one, see ya.